Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. I'm your host, Jody Krangle, and this podcast will discuss just how sound influences our behavior. I generally talk about this in the context of advertising and marketing, but there are other places this is important too. I really feel that it plays a much more important role in our lives than maybe we realize. So let's delve a little deeper. Here's the second part of my interview with Monty Bowden. So I have a question for you about working with voice talent, sure. because I know that you do that a lot on a lot of the commercials and probably the charity work that you do as well. Yeah. So how do you give your voice talent um, the direction that you need them to go in? Do you usually like, like explain it? Do you give them the music? Do you, is there other things that you can give them? Yeah. Um, I, I like to typically give them enough so that they have an idea of, of what we're, what our goal is, right? Well, here's what we're trying to do with this, this spot or with this video. Um, and ideally, I mean, like in a fundraising uh, environment, I want them to get to know the organization a little bit. So if we can give them some background. Sure. Um, Cause if they, if they can, can get their heart connected to it, uh, they're going to be that much more impactful mm-hmm, um, because definitely. they, they understand the need. So in something like that with the long form, if you can get that script to them in advance, give them some time to, to really, um, immerse a little bit in it, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's, that's helpful. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, yeah, what you said, if, if we can more pieces that we can show them and how it's all going to come together. Yes. Yeah, like if, if you're in a play, um, or if you're in a musical or something like that, you know, at the beginning, um, I've been in just enough of those to kind of know you do an initial read through, right? At the beginning, everybody who's been cast mm-hmm. reads through it. The director kind of yeah. walks you through it, maybe tells you about some of the important uh, scenes that uh, really make that, uh, that production go. And so it's kind of giving you that background. Say, so this, is, this is what's here. Um, and I, I remember in the musical, we listened to the other performances of that just so we kind of became immersed in it. And it it's, it's that on a, on a, on a smaller level, obviously, but the more that, uh, that we can help them, um, to see, to understand the why, um, I think the better the, uh, the end product is and really setting them up for success. And I like to just be quiet and let them do what they, what they do. Right. Um, sure. you know, my job, I'm, I'm pulling it together. I'm producing or directing, however you want to say that. And then you just got to, you know, get out of the way. Um, <laughs> the, way the way I understand Clint, Clint Eastwood does it, you know, sure. he's, a, he's a pretty good director. He was a really good actor, one of my favorites, um, but doesn't have a lot. Just kind of lets people do what they do um, mm-hmm. and then and then coach him up. Um, you know, hey, can we go back? Uh, let, let, let's try this. I'd like to see what you could do with this particular line uh what what would happen if right and then again just get out of the way let them let them do their thing um and then i think the other part of that once that work is done is then really trusting um your editors um i typically you know i i can i I will make a note remember hey that cut was really good but i trust them enough they're gonna find that um and they may hear something that i missed all right because i might have been thinking about something else while mm-hmm. you were delivering this really cool line and they pick that out and I would have missed it. So, um, <laughs> it's, it's really, um, relying on that team, um, that, that makes all of this work and, uh, knowing that, Hey, hey surround yourself with, uh, with talent and then, then let them be talented. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, a good point. So speaking of the team, um, when you're putting together an ad for a client, Um, you're keeping their brand in mind, obviously. Yeah. So how much of that branding goes into what you do to make a commercial? Like, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, I know. So there is, you know, the, the, um, the very basics of that, I think number one, tone, um, Mm -hmm. you know, that what, what's, what's their voice, what's their brand voice? Um, you know, are they authoritative? Um, are they, uh, you know, educating, are they, uh, inspiring um and sometimes they they move and and do lots of things but really you know what what's the character of that brand Mm -hmm. and then staying true to that um number one first of all you you have to establish it right sure yeah (laughs) i I think it's some of the work that we've done and 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 when you came uh as the new voice we're at the very beginning of that and and helping to establish uh, what that brand sounds like um and then it's it's just a matter of of uh you know, continuing to invest in that, being consistent, 
um, in that, it, whether that's uh, the voice talent, whether that's the, uh, the music choice and selection, um, all of that uh, has, has an impact on people being able to recognize um, mm-hmm. who you are. Um, and again, if that's the case, you may be able to, to say more uh, by writing less um, because they've already recognized you. Uh, they, they may already uh, be a, a brand uh, champion, if you will, and already be loyal, have brand loyalty. Yeah. Because uh, then it's very easy to, to just immediately make that connection. And I just think um, about some of the, the track record of, you know, longtime voice talent um, can pay big dividends because it's that, that recognized voice. Um, that, hey, I know this is this is who's talking to me. Yeah, consistency is the key, I do find. And uh, unfortunately, I think it's kind of a losing battle these days. Like a lot of times people yeah. just are not, <laughs> they're not thinking that way. <laughs> yeah, no, it, I mean, I, I just think about, you know, look at what Kentucky Fried Chicken has done with the number of Colonel Sanderses yeah. <laughs> they've had in the last few years, <laughs> That's right? That's true, yeah. Um, it, they're all playing the same person, mm-hmm. um, but that's how they've, that's one of the ways that they're disrupting, getting our attention, getting us to want to tune in to see, wow, who will it be next? You know, which comedian <laughs> is going to be the colonel next, right? Sure. And that that's pretty brilliant. Um, if you if you think about that, but they've they they've figured out how far can we stray, mm-hmm. but still stay within the lines. It's still about the colonel, right? So it's like consistent inconsistency. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but right, but it give. What does it give you? I, we're we have an evolving story. We have engagement now. You know, it's beyond just just um, talking to you, or it's about getting you involved. And that's, you know, when we think about uh, new media and, and new ways of reaching, it's how are we making that deeper connection? Mm-hmm. How are we taking it from here's what we want you to know, here's what we want you to do, here's how we want you to respond. Here's how we're going to be in this together. Uh, that's where that the, the the magic and really, really, what are we expecting of our brands now? We you know, we we really expect our brands to not just provide something. We expect them to do something, to be involved, uh, right? That's very true. Yeah, it's gotten a little more. We're not just selling a, a product or a service. It's it's how are how are we living with you, right? I mean, uh-huh. what what are we doing to make our community better? Uh, what are we doing to help people know that uh, we care about what they care about? Um, and well, I think a lot of times these days, um, the especially with the younger generation, um, people have a huge BSO meter. <laughs> oh yeah, they've just heard so much <laughs> in the last while that they're just not in it to be sold to anymore. They want to experience. They want to feel. Yeah, and you know they they want authentic. Um, we all do. Yes. Um, and I think um, you know I've been blessed with with clients that have recognized that um, really. For quite some time and allow us access to in the area of healthcare to talk to their patients in the area of fundraising to talk to the people who are being served um whose needs are being met mm-hmm. um because that cuts through that bs meter pretty quickly yeah uh, when you have <laughs> when you have a patient saying well they saved my daughter's life mm-hmm. uh it's pretty hard to argue right yeah um, and and, it, and 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 you know so if you can connect at that level um and that's uh you know that's that's really powerful and that doesn't have a lot of uh scripting that's involved um Mm -hmm. you just have to be wise enough to uh, pick out the things that uh, are going to make the biggest difference so speaking of working with uh sound in the advertising realm is there anything you've done with sound up to this point that you have that's like a favorite of yours that you just loved doing and i mean all around like music sound effects doesn't have to involve voiceover (laughs) Oh, you mean besides working with Jody? Well, yeah, besides me. <laughs> um, no, well, I, I really think um, when I think about things that I enjoy, I, I really do enjoy working with voice talent. Um, that's that's something that I think is just um, I don't know. I, I had have have been the the benefactor of enough good direction um, that I just know that uh, you know it's kind of that steel sharpening steel. Hey, we can we can uh, help each other to be better. Mm-hmm. I, as things that, that just just favorite that's a really good question um trying to think of of man what was really fun. I, I here's what i think um the the most fun projects um have been things that when we've we've really working to make um that big impact um and and we I, i've been inspired 
many times by a really good movie trailer. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm amazed at how movie trailers, I think, keep getting even better and better, even though sometimes I think the stories aren't always as, as, as compelling. <laughs> That's so true, yeah. It's all in the editing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the the new the next new trailer for Top Gun just dropped this last weekend, and so my oh, yeah. uh, my friends and family were sharing that around. And it's like I don't know how good the story is going to be, but man, do they make flying a jet just look cool? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I'm sure it is, right? Uh -huh, I mean, it's yeah. kind of, but it's like it's it's a little over the top, but it's just, it it's that, but it's what what comes out of that it's creating that kind of emotion and i i think if when i when i look back at some of the, the things i've enjoyed doing the most it's when we've re had real opportunity to do something cinematic um that really captures almost like a, a movie trailer does and, and just mm -hmm. takes you into a place and into a story very quickly uh and then brings you out and you're like oh i want more <laughs> so. yeah the anticipation, the excitement about what's to come yeah uh so i uh would be curious to know what you're working on right now well um currently um we are have a, have a number of things um as you know i work for a healthcare client that's a, a pretty big client of ours and so it gets a, a lot of uh, of my attention mm -hmm. but we're um we've been working with them um on really this kind of evolving uh new really great thing it's it's called transparency um where healthcare is uh um moving to to let you know what things are going to cost what's going to be covered what isn't what's involved with the procedure oh uh, that's a good thing to know yeah finally and our client is really a, <laughs> ha, has been a leader in this to the point of um their their uh, state uh governor um has elevated them and said you know this is a so they're an example of, of someone who's doing this right um oh, great. and they've introduced legislation to have others kind of follow their lead and so they're on the front of that so we're we're working to uh help people to understand um how they can access that information so uh we've been we've been rolling out a, a campaign on that um we've uh been doing a lot of work they have a children's hospital um mm -hmm. and and so we uh, recently uh, got to meet some of the the kids that uh, are being helped and, and really get to tell their story and, and it's it's uh, it's pretty rewarding you know, when you're working around uh, little kids that have just had these horrible things happen and and uh, knowing that there's somebody there uh, that can uh, can can make them better can heal them um, yeah. and and not just take care of them but take care of their families and uh, it's it's pretty rewarding whenever we're working on the children's side of the hospital uh, mm -hmm. just the the stories that you're able to tell uh, and and uh, and really make a a connection with people to know hey if some we pray that it never would but if something like uh, this would happen to your child. Uh, these folks are here for you and they, they, they just do a great job of, of caring um, and, uh, and really not just taking care of that kid, but taking care of your family too. So that's pretty powerful. So those are just a few things that are going on. Yeah. Knowing that there's someone there for you is, I guess, the, the point of these, um, you know, commercials and films. And yeah. And, and I think um, we're the work that we do, um, be that fundraising, be it healthcare, be it uh, higher education. We just have mm -hmm. a, a, a set of uh, clients, a uh, area of uh, areas of expertise that that really do uh, make a difference uh, in people's lives. Um, you know, we're able to uh, to make an impact. You know, when it uh, has to do with uh, making communities better or making people's uh, health better, um, you know, you 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 feel like man, at the end of the day, what we do matters, and mm -hmm. we're, we're making an impact, and and uh, that's pretty important. Yeah, definitely, it is. So how can people find out more about you? Are there any links that you'd like to share? And, and is there any like charity things you're working on that you could also share links? Yeah, to? Um, we're, we're excited. I, I think we're uh, with, with the, the year 2020, we're uh, in the process of updating our, uh, our website. So that's going to have a, a new uh, feel to it. Um, oh, good. I'm excited to see what that's going to be like. But uh, AmperageMarketing.com, okay. um, where you'll find out about uh, all the wonderful things about Cambridge marketing and fundraising. <laughs> so that's okay. Good. Um, I will. I, I won't name any causes, but on the website, I have no doubt there's going to be examples and ways to connect with uh, some of the causes that we support. There's there's too many <laughs> many good okay. ones to to start to single any of them out. Um, yeah. You know, and 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 really, um, it's just a, a a really wide variety of uh, of folks that uh, we're able to help along the way. And uh, just having a, a really talented team that focuses on, on that part of it. Um, you know, we we've got a great group in in, in fundraising, and uh, mm -hmm. they've, they've got a great track record of success. So we're we're awfully proud of them. Yeah, 
Those charities will keep you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys do. are on Facebook too, right? Uh, yeah, I believe we are. Um, look for Amperage Marketing out there if you want to look for us on Facebook um, mm-hmm. and uh, can can kind of follow along with uh, with what we're doing out there in the social. I, I don't have responsibilities in those areas, but I know we have people who do. And so you can look well, you for us there. You have plenty to do. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine. There's yeah, that, no, yeah. <laughs> I'm usually thinking about uh, our clients' uh, social presence and what uh, what they need to be doing. But, um, you know, and, and it, think about uh the the area of, of influencers now and and uh, even how um you know that's that's what's happening on on social with with these uh people that you think well gee what what's their talent well they're a social media influencer and i think and oh that's what we've been doing in advertising in a long time we just haven't had that uh that uh, platform and and uh, maybe personality but uh, what can we learn from them it's, it's pretty interesting what what's evolving and happening out there right now oh yeah this has definitely been the decade of social media <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I think I asked you at one uh, a while back, um, you know, if you were ever asked about what your uh, following is just as voice talent, you know, would you oh, have yeah. an impact? Um, how many followers do you have if that's part of uh, the vetting process for, for voice talent? So it, it's interesting. I think it depends on what the product or service is. And, you know, I think it's a lot more um, prevalent when people are doing video games or maybe even mm-hmm. audiobooks or, uh, you know, something that's more performance, um, you know, because I guess um, how much of a fan base you have can also play a part in how important that end result ends up being. So I, I can sort of see why companies are interested in it. It definitely does help them get the word out. <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know that it should be the be all and end all of why they would hire a voice talent. <laughs> Right. They may be looking for for a celebrity, right, who could then become the voice talent. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, like, if, if you want Will Smith, then just hire Will Smith. Hire Will Smith. <laughs> you know, like, like, right? Like, <laughs> you know, that's, that's, I don't know that uh, a voice talent necessarily should be worried about how big their following is unless they're doing animation and video games. Yeah. I think then maybe it becomes a bit of a thing yep. because those people can become celebrities in their own right. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm the voice of, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I'm a bit more anonymous. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> and, 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 and is that what attracts you? I mean, uh, it attracts you to being voice talent is because you are a little bit behind the scenes. I mean, you're out front, but it's really not about you. It's about the message or just how yeah. does that work? You know what? I do really appreciate that part of what I do. I I enjoy that a lot. And it really fulfills me to be the a person that helps get that message across instead of being like the be all and end all of the message. Right. Uh, I'm part of a team. And I like that. That's that's fun for me. Yeah. You know, when when we we were talking about um, directing and working with voice talent, let me ask you this, if I can. (laughs) Sure. Working at voice talent. um, What do you appreciate from the the producer director um when when you're coming into a project or or maybe starting out with with something for a brand the first time well when i mentioned the music and how much that influences me it's definitely a big piece of that uh, of that pie like i if i hear the music beforehand um i pretty much know exactly where to go with it mm-hmm. because that gives me the tone it 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 gives me the feeling of what they're going for just with that musical language right there like that's, mm-hmm. that's how sound affects me. Music yeah. just gets right to my soul. And I know precisely what to do if I hear the music. Um, other than that, you know, if uh, someone has an idea of what they want to hear, or they actually have heard one of my demos and want me to sound like one of the pieces on it, um, or uh, they have um, a particular audience member in mind, um, you know, those kinds of things can all be really yeah. helpful to know. And then on the other, what, what drives you nuts? <laughs> uh, I think people just telling me they'll know when they hear it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I could certainly do what I do, you know, as we were talking about before. That's what I'm trained to do. It's, you know, that's what all the coaching is for. Sure. But, um, but at the same time, if I don't have any idea of what they want and they're not sharing music and they haven't told me anything about their product or service, you know, I, I'm, I'm shooting in the dark. Right. 
Uh, and and then it doesn't surprise me when I end up doing something three or four times because, <laughs> uh, you know, I didn't get any direction. <laughs> right. Hey, we it need happens. a revision. We're starting to figure out what we really want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, or I do something and they say, well, we decided to go in a different a different way. So let's try this tone. I'm like, I, I OK. <laughs> There's a limit to how many times I will do that. <laughs> right. Well, and we started out talking about music and I know you're a musician. Um, and how does, how does, how does correlate? Um, I'm, I'm more of a big fan of music. I like all types of music. Was, What's your mm -hmm. favorite type of music? I said, whatever I'm listening to. Right. Yeah, but, yeah. but how do you, how do you think, does that affect, um, I guess your, your performance or, or how, how, what, what do you think, think it helps you to perceive sound differently than maybe someone who isn't as musically inclined? I, you know what? I think that maybe there's a different understanding of the sound when you can make it as opposed to just listen to it. And I don't know that that, I, you know, I'm not sure it's necessarily a good thing. Not that it's a bad thing most of the time, but it makes it hard for me to just sit and listen to music. I'm, I'm constantly analyzing it. I'm constantly, you know, thinking, could I sing this? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, it's just, it's just an automatic thing. It just happens in my head automatically without me having to do anything. But it does take me out of just the simple enjoyment. <laughs> yeah, but you're appreciating it in a different way. I am. Yeah. But it also means that when I'm relaxing, I don't tend to listen to music. I want silence. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know why that well, is, no. but... Yeah, <laughs> it's it's the same. I mean, I to this day, I will still sit and watch a, a broadcast newscast and I'll break it down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm yeah. thinking about, well, they, you know, they could have done this if they'd have gone from this story. Or why did they do it? Anyway, well, I'll see a commercial and instead of just, you know, the commercial being the commercial, I'm thinking about, well, what were they thinking? Why did they do that? Oh, that's a great <laughs> idea. You know? And yeah. so it does. It starts to to really affect how you consume. It becomes an exercise every time in your head, you know, whenever you see something that is yeah. related to what you do. <laughs> right. But it's, uh, it's, I just, I love the idea of sound and, and what it does to us because it's just so primal. Yeah. It's just one of those, it reaches directly into the lizard brain. <laughs> yeah, it does. You know, and I think uh, we... I hadn't thought about this, but we, we probably begin to hear really before we can begin to see, you know, you think about a little baby and their eyes mm -hmm. aren't, you know, they, they tell you as new parents, they really aren't going to begin to recognize your face for a little while, mm -hmm. but they're hearing, they're hearing stuff right away and they're feeling stuff right away. It's like, yeah. it's interesting how, how our senses, um, how we become keen to different things, maybe perhaps on just how we develop. And it's also a lot of, uh, vibration i guess as well because sound is vibration yeah and we're just interpreting it but you know like a a, a baby before they're born is feeling the um the vibrations of the mother yeah you know so yeah. it's you know mom's voice right <laughs> yeah but i mean even beyond that like the baby may not recognize what that is right but it's comforting them and so you know so there's a lot that goes into this. We are very strange creatures. Is it something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just how vibration works and sound waves travel and, and, uh, and all of that. Like yeah. We there's were, a, a huge amount that goes into yeah, all Dis this. With Disney Plus uh, out now with documentaries and that, I was talking with my uh, son and, and daughter-in-law and they were just like blown away with this idea of there's no sound in space. <laughs> you know? It's yeah. Like, and they were saying, well, it was so good that, you know, George Lucas let that go when he made Star Wars so that we could hear the explosions and the lasers <laughs> by space because well, we it, be it makes it a whole lot more fun it. to watch. It's yeah. true. No, we have I to, mean, how do yeah. we, how would we relate? Right. We wouldn't, yeah. we wouldn't relate. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really, it's really powerful. I, I don't know. I, I would want to spend a lot of time in space devoid of sound. I think it would be a pretty, uh, unfulfilling uh experience in that regard first there's probably plenty to look at being out amongst the stars but i would miss miss the sound for sure yeah i think a lot of people would <laughs> definitely <laughs> well this has been a great discussion and i really appreciate your taking the time because i know you are a busy guy <laughs> well i i hope you can find some sound that's worth uh you know someone else's time in listening and uh oh i, I have so no cool doubt <laughs> that uh this this uh era of podcasts and and just more ways of learning and connecting uh it's really mm -hmm. cool i'm glad you're on board with that and uh 
we work to encourage our clients to think about uh, these ways of communicating. And so this is one more example of how that gets done and how it works. So thanks for the opportunity. Always good to talk to you, Jody. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, be good. You too. Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, please take a moment to give the podcast a review. It's greatly appreciated and super helpful. Until next time.